my dudes. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a special video for you guys today. This is gonna be something really cool that I've been looking forward to for a while. I wanna do a charity auction. So in today's video, we're going to be making a ring patterned after the Dark Souls Dark Wood Grain Ring. And we're going to be using Damascus Steel for this. And we're gonna auction it off on eBay. So there'll be a link down in the description. You can click on that. That'll be to the eBay auction. And then whatever it sells for, we're gonna take that money and we're gonna donate it all to the NCA. That's the National Children's Alliance. They're an organization whose whole goal is just to help abuse children in the US. And then we're gonna be taking all of the money we get from that. And then I'm gonna add 10% to that. So if it sells for $1,000, I'm gonna donate $1,100. And I think this is a really good fit for this charity auction. I think it'll be really cool to have the gamer community as well as people who like rings you know you don't have to be into video games to like the ring so just everyone involved with this channel in some way or another we can all come together as a community and do something really cool for these children and if you're just not interested in the ring that's totally fine i'll have a link down to their website in the description you can just donate whatever you want whether it's a dollar it can be 10. so for the ring we're going to be patterning it after the Dark Souls Dark Wood Grain Ring. So we're actually going to be making the ring out of Damascus steel. And you can see it's got a really dark finish on that. We'll be emulating that by doing a black oxide finish. And then we'll also give it a really heavy etch in acid. And I think that'll give us a really similar look to the actual appearance of the one in the game. It says in the wiki here that it's made out of gold. I just don't know if there's any way, like obviously we could paint it black and then even maybe use a CNC lathe to carve the wood grain pattern into it. But I think this is going to be the best way to make a natural version of a ring that will look very similar to this. And I think we'll make the ring about a size 10, maybe like a nine and a half. That's a pretty average size. It'll fit a bigger range of people. That way more people can bid on the ring. Or if it doesn't fit you and you still like the ring, you can always use it as a keychain or something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna be using this rod of Damascus steel. It's already hollowed out, so this shouldn't be too difficult. We just need to get the diameter that we want and then shape it. This is gonna be a bit thinner of a ring than we normally make. So that'll be a little bit different, but obviously the steps are gonna be pretty much the same. And then maybe at the end of the video, we'll try this out. In the game, it switches you from doing a quick roll when you roll to doing a cartwheel, and then it makes you invulnerable to taking damage for a little bit. You recover faster, you can flip over lava. So if we can find some active volcanoes, we might be able to go out. Maybe we'll get away with second degree burns instead of third degree burns. So when we're done with the ring, we'll see if we can feel any of those positive benefits. I'm a little bit scared it's not gonna actually do anything, but we'll maybe start with some cartwheels first and work our way up to a volcano, we'll see. But let's go ahead and get started and we'll worry about that later. So the first step I'm going to be taking will be trimming the outer diameter into the ring. And so I've just got my lathe bit here and I'm just carving it away. And it would probably be smarter to cut a disc off with the bandsaw like I typically do. But I just wanted to switch things up for this video. It's kind of fun to carve away at the whole piece all at one time. So I've cut it to the proper outer diameter that we're going to go for, and then I'm using this boring bar here and cutting the inner diameter to get it pretty close to what we want. I'm going to leave a lot of room for adjusting once we slice it off with the bandsaw, and then we can touch it up back on the lathe again. So for cutting it on the bandsaw, it's really simple. You just need to adjust a few things like the downforce the saw puts on it. Because if it's going too fast, that can stall out your bandsaw or cause a bunch of other issues. And then if it's going too slow, it's just going to be rubbing on it and cause the blade to overheat. That way it'll lose its temper and the teeth will go dull on the blade. And I can also adjust the speed at which the saw blade itself moves. So there are a few things that go into cutting it, but especially for a steel like this that's pretty universal and easy to work with, it's not that difficult to get the settings at least close enough that it's not going to cause any issues. Now I'm going over to the belt sander and all I'm doing is trying to get rid of any of the sharp edges or burrs left over from the bandsaw. So this is really quick, just kind of cleaning it up everywhere. 
Now we'll head back over to the lathe and this is where I'll start to put a little bit of comfort finish on the ring. So you can see I'm using the Dremel and I'm just trying to get rid of that harsh edge here, kind of round things out. Then once I've got this side to the point where I want it, I'm going to flip it over and repeat the same process to the other side. That way it's completely symmetrical. Set it off. Time to go. Engines running. We're on our own. All right, so that's the inside of the ring done. I started off with a coarse sandpaper on my Dremel and I moved up to a finer grit. But you can see it still is a bit rough, but that's okay because we're gonna be completely etching away that entire finish in acid, so it really doesn't matter. Now we need to go ahead and do the outside of the ring and you can see I'm using this stainless steel ring mandrel here. This makes it really easy to mount the ring on the lathe to work on. And if you didn't know, I sell these on my supplies website. So there's a link to that in the description. It's just patrickadairsupplies.com. And there's also a coupon code down there. So if you've been interested in an expanding ring mandrel these are a really good option they're stainless steel and then they've got huge steps on them making it really easy to center the rings on there properly and you'll see I'm using the coarse sandpaper on the Dremel and I'm trying to round this out the actual Dark Souls ring has quite a round profile to it so I'm trying to match that And then once I'm done with the Dremel, I switch over and do a little bit of sandpaper. I'm not worried about getting a really good finish on here because like I said earlier, when I was doing the inside of the ring, it really won't matter. We're gonna be etching this ring like crazy. Now we're finished with the shaping of the ring. It's time to etch it in acid. And this is gonna be where the ring really transforms and goes from just a regular looking metal ring to having all of that cool wood grain pattern. And then once we're done etching it, that's where we're going to give it that black oxide finish I was talking about. But for the etching, all I'm doing is I'm pouring out half ferric chloride and then the other half hydrogen peroxide and that just helps speed things up and then like I said we're going to be etching this for quite a while so I ended up doing it for about 14 hours this was overnight and then here's just something really interesting I wanted to share with you guys you can see this pattern of bubbles on the surface of the ferric chloride the bubbles are patterned in a way that it makes it look like a Damascus steel ring you can even see the twisting pattern of the Damascus steel in the bubbles and when I first saw this I just thought it was a coincidence but I was really careful to pull it out of the acid exactly Exactly the way that it was positioned and you can see in these two photos it was positioned exactly like I thought it was and I was just blown away by how much detail you can get out of literal just bubbles and the reason for that is one of the types of steel in this dissolves faster than the other and so more bubbles come from that and I just thought it was super interesting that those bubbles go up completely straight and they stay there even for hours at a time and you can see the finish on the ring, it's pretty dark right now, but I took it upstairs and I just washed it off. I used a toothbrush and soap. So now you'll notice that it's a lot lighter in color. So we wanna put a permanent black finish on this. And so to do that, we're going to be heating the ring up until it's red hot with a blowtorch. And then we're going to quickly dunk it in just motor oil. And that causes it to react with the oil and it gives us this permanent black finish on it. And it can scratch away, but it is a really robust finish that it puts on it. And it makes the ring very resistant to rusting. So you can see here this is how the ring turned out I think it looks incredible and I'm completely blown away by how similar it looks to the actual ring in Dark Souls and we don't have a very good high resolution photo of it I just don't think there's one that exists but I just think this was such a cool project and it turned out even better than I even imagined and after sitting on things for a while I actually had a suggestion from Ben he's one of the guys that works with me and he's actually the one that gave me the idea for this video originally he thought it would look better to sand the ridges on the ring that way you'd get a little bit of that metal colored highlight on there so in just these last couple of photos you'll see that finish that I put on there and I think it really did benefit the look of the ring. It's kind of difficult to interpret what exactly the ring looks like in the video game but I think what we ended up with was about as close as you could possibly get. And then as far as special abilities that this ring gives you, unfortunately I was not able to perform a cartwheel. I know that is kind of sad because it's not even hard but I still can't do a cartwheel so no luck on that. I definitely wasn't about to go try running over lava if it couldn't even help me do a cartwheel. So maybe the person who buys this ring from the eBay auction. Maybe they can try it out. Maybe they can post a video of it. But all I know is at least I didn't feel any effects from it. 
But anyways guys, all jokes aside, please go do check out the eBay listing for this ring. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm excited to see how much money we can raise. And like I said before, whatever this ring sells for, whether it's $100 or $1,000, I'll add 10% of that of my own money, and then we'll donate it all to charity. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe. There's also a link to the description to both my supplies website and my ring website. So if you're interested in making rings or buying rings, there's links for those. And please let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments. I thought it was really fun to do a video game inspired ring. So let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you on Wednesday my dudes.